Welcome to my channel Dr. Munshi Nasser is skilled on how are you my dear learners in this video we are going to introduce how to enter primary data or survey data in JAP software you know previously in my early days we use SPSS software for primary data or survey data entry but nowadays SPSS become expensive and there are many open source softwares which is completely free JAPS one of those software which is completely free for students academicians in this video i'm going to share how to enter this primary data into this free open source fantastic software called japs so without wasting any time let's get started my dear learners first of all you go to the website japsstats.org and you will see download you can see once you go to the download, this is the latest version of the JAPS. There is Windows version, Mac version and Linux version. So whatever the operating system in your computer, you can use one of these download option. Once you download, install it in your computer. Once you install in your computer, the JAPS software interface looks like this. Once you are opening the JAPS, there will be nothing in the interface. But we will show you how to enter the primary data into the JAPS just like SPSS software. Now, in this first interface introduction, you can see Welcome to JAPS, a fresh way to do statistics, free, friendly and flexible. Okay. Now, the first of all, I am introducing the questionnaire. Now, here is a demonstration purposes, one of the questionnaire where I said how we can structure a questionnaire for efficient, primary data entry in JAPS. Our main idea of this questionnaire is demand and price data collection questionnaire for JAPS. Now in economics, marketing, management, sometimes we need to collect data from demand and price as well. For that particular purposes, that survey data we need to input into the JAPS software. And therefore, the way it should be structured in the questionnaire for JAPS data entry, it is just look like this. For example, here age is a categorical variable. As you know, there are three types of category in the variable selection, scale, categorical and numerical. So here it is categorical, meaning that there are different categories under different age group. For example, 1 is equal to 18 to 24 age group. So here 18 to 24 or 25 to 34 is my level and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is my code likewise gender is a categorical variable where male female and others are the label and the coded are one two and three likewise income range product type importance of pricing and then we have likelihood to buy more than more with 10 percent price decrease as you know there is an inverse relationship between quantity demand and price so if there is a less in the price or price decrease, quantity demand tends to increase. So in order to find out that theoretical contribution, we can find out using this questionnaire data entry. Likewise, we can see purchasing frequency. Sometimes we can use usual price in numerical, meaning that scale variable or absolute number, like for instance, 10, 12, 13, for instance, something like that without coding. Okay, so this is how I can structure a questionnaire for my demonstration purposes or survey purposes. And now I am using this questionnaire to enter the data into the JAPS interface. Okay, now for example, once I open the JAPS, I go to the new data. Okay, so I click the new data, there will be interface like this. Now in the first column, in the column box, double click it. And you will see the interface look like this. So here you can put the name for instance here, let's say age. And in the long name, since age is something very small, so you do not have to explain it what age means. So here also you can describe what age you are referring or maybe the context of your research, you can do that. Now age is a categorical variable. So here we can see ordinal and nominal. So either of these will work However, ordinal meaning that satisfied, very satisfied order of preferences and nominal means the categorical variable like age and gender. 
So in this case, age is a nominal category. So I choose nominal as a categorical variable option. And then you can see the use of custom values if there is a missing value. So once I create this, I will just close this window and you will see that the variable is already created. As you know from the questionnaire that my age group has one, two, three, four, five categories, right? So I can write down in this jet one, two, three, and four, five. So these are my coded numbers. Now I need to label those coded numbers, right? So I again double click it and you will see the value and the level. Now in my questionnaire, you see this level R, 18 to 24 is my first level. So under this level, I just have to copy and paste this level over here. Likewise, I do the same for the coded code number 2, code number 3 and code number 4 and 5. So all these things, I just copy and paste it from my level values. So this will indicate that what level indicates what code. In this case, the three code levels 34, 5 to 44 age group and 45 to 54 age group is my level of coded 4 value. And the finally, I have 5 which is my code coded number and in this code, I have 55 and above is my level. And level is very important because without the level, we do not know what does the code means. So that's why we are adding this level. Now once you added those things, let's assume that. Now you can see the age group 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we already have coded those things. So let us, let us enter the whole thing. Press enter and we can go back and see my values are already there. 1, 2, 3, 4 and these are the respondent age groups. Let's say respondent number 1, his age group was 18 to 24 and he is under the code of 1. Likewise 1, 2, 3, 4 is my coded number and 18 to 24 is my level. So each of this row indicating the perso persons or respondent that we are collecting data. For instance in this case I can write down 4 meaning that I have these four in two times, meaning that these five respondents, among those five respondents, I have two coded four and four, two respondents are falling under same age group, 45 to 54. I hope you understand the issue. Okay. Now, secondly, I am going to share another one is directly putting the number value. So, if I say demand, demand and I just press OK, you will see that the demand column is already here. Okay. Now, once the demand column is already there, now I can put the value of the demand in an absolute number. So, here I can put the value of the number 30, and then we have 40, then we have 56. I'm just randomly putting the number so that you can understand what I'm trying to say. And then here the age is a categorical variable, so I can change it in nominal variable. So you can see the categories are shown first and then the coded values, corresponding codes are also showing here. Now I have a scale meaning that the absolute value, so 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, these are the number of demand. And I can create another column called price. Okay, I can create another column called price and then I will, you will see that the price column is over here. So you know that demand and quantity demand and price is a negative relationship. So you can see, let's say in the first column, first value is price 10, but gradually when the price decreases, quantity demand increases. So from 20 to 30, quantity demand increases, price decreases, price even decreases, quantity demand increases. Now even the price now increases because quantity demand again decreases and now here as well quantity demand increases from 56 to 60 because of the price decreases. So we have absolute value, quantity demand is an absolute value so we, pre, we, we select scale, price is a scale, scale value because it is an absolute value 
when we category we use this nominal or ordinal value so in this case age is a nominal value so we choose this nominal categorical option this is how we can create our survey data entry from the questionnaire okay now one last thing is that let's assume that i want to compute something okay i want to compute something in that case i can just double click on a new column and press the name of the price aggregate for instance this is my new column and i want to compute something in this column okay so i double click on that again and you will see that there is a option called compute type i can press the computer with r code and computer with drag and drop click the compute option you will see this one compute means that composite in the spss option i want to create a new variable okay so let's assume this is my new variable price age and i'm going to compete it with the demand plus price see compute column click this one and as you can see computation column are completed so 30 38 47 61 63 this is my new column computed from demand plus price these two aggregation or composite variable which is called price a this is how you can create a new variable just like SPSS software. Very easy, very simple in JEPS. Once you have done it, go to the analyze it and you will see there are many options. You can see descriptive statistics, you can see time series, t-test, ANOVA, mixed regression, frequency, factor, lot of things you can do. I want to create a plot. So I can create a flex plot like this and in JAPS, it will automatically open up just like this one. You will see that the JAPS will create a flex plot very nicely, the relationship between quantity demand and price. So let's say quantity demand is my dependent variable and price is my independent variable. Flex plot will share the downward sloping line. As you can see here that the downward sloping line which indicates demand curve which indicates demand curve. So from downward sloping demand curve, I can create downward sloping demand curve. I can create from this descriptive statistics flex plot using flex plot. There are several other way we can create different type of graphs. One of the best way is called the visual modeling. And in the JFs, there is a fantastic way drag and drop option called the visual modeling. And here you can see flex plot, linear modeling, mixed modeling, and generalized linear modeling. So there are so many options you have to create the different type of diagrams in order to visualize your data before you go into the analysis. So JEPS is a very fantastic way to enter your survey data. Once you enter the survey data, you can create new variable and also using these fantastic descriptive statistics and flex plot, you can visualize your data and the correlationship between the data very easily now here this demand curve once you create the demand curve which is a downward sloping demand curve once it is created copy the whole thing and you will open up in the word file and you will paste it over here create the data for example here you can see save image as so if you want to save the image of this you can always use that you can copy it you can edit the image as well and there are several options also here to name the images like uh, giving the level of the plot for example here plot leveling and all those things so i hope this video is useful for you i will see you 